so John, j- just to review, how long have you been in Vegas? How long? Uh, well, I was here. I moved here in '99, and then I left again for for a while. So I've been okay. back. Um, I've been back since 2009. Okay. So 10 years. Okay. So I got uh, my time's been straight through. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, but uh, so you've enjoyed a lot of holidays here. Yeah. Yeah. Some um, I didn't enjoy, like when we had to work at the hotel. Right. Those sucked. <laughs> yeah, and we always did. Yeah. We always yeah. did, because I know that I, I made an effort to to give the, um, the family families a break. You know, uh, I didn't. I don't have any kids, and I didn't I really care when I celebrated the holidays, so I always worked on the holidays so yeah. the moms and dads could, you know, uh, yeah. to enjoy it. Yeah, but I remember one year at the Venetian, I had to work on Christmas Day, and I thought incorrectly as it turned out that it wouldn't be that that busy i mean there were what's there to do right i mean yeah. who's going to be there there yeah. might be some foreign tourists and stuff no, <laughs> some. It was, it was, and they're all pissed off because everything's closed that's right well what do they expect that's right the shows are all dark yeah, that's right and yeah so so that was it however i did have after the first year i had thanksgiving off because you know i remember my days off were wednesday thursday yes it's the only reason i got thanksgiving off. right right that's funny. Yeah, yeah. The 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 deluge of non Christians, and then you were strapped with uh, the, uh, the keeping the menorah lit. And I had to keep the menorah <laughs> lit, and people are pissing and growling about what time I, I screwed in the light bulbs and which ones and which ones. They're, and other people are complaining they don't have a Christmas tree in their room or if they can light candles. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> the answer is no. Yeah. You well, still I, want to ask the question. Well, as you can tell, we're talking about uh, <laughs> holiday happenings in Las Vegas. Uh, we've uh, we've experienced a lot of them. Just so everybody, uh, uh, I know I said we were going to do the, the strange history of Nevada. We're going to delay that a bit because I'm finding some very interesting things I want to share with our audience uh, and all of our listeners. So that's going to be delayed I probably until next month. Uh, so we will get all that uh, produced for you and all the information so you can have some fun about strange info uh, of the entire state of Nevada, not just uh, Las Vegas, but holiday happenings in in Las Vegas. First, though, we're going to we're gonna, a couple of anniversaries. Uh, happy 30th anniversary to, of course, the Mirage Hotel. Yes, it just turned 30 years old. Yeah. It's a millennial. It's a millennial. <laughs> That's a millennial. Yeah, it lives with his parents. Yeah. Uh, uh, I like the Mirage still. Yeah, I wor- it's a nice I, I work a great deal uh, at Mirage. Um, it's a it's a pleasant place to go. Um, you know the opening uh, sort of jungle garden bridge area that that takes you into the casino. Always very nice. Um, uh, they have a, an aquarium, of course, a little tiny one, not as like the Mandalay Bay. But uh, I, I've always liked it. Um, I don't like the trek all the way across where I normally have to work. Uh, uh, to the convention area, uh, but um, uh, I do. I like it, and I still get a kick out of watching the volcano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I saw it not long ago. Yeah. I happened to be there. I lucked out. I was walking on the strip, and, and I saw the Bellagio. Mm-hmm. The water fountains were mm-hmm. going off, and then there was the volcano. So you know, I think uh, as character goes, character of the shows, uh, I think the volcano is better. Yeah. Than the Bellagio. Yeah. Bellagio's nice, yeah. you know, uh, but Bellagio, in my opinion, um, it carries the popularity and the mystique of the music. Yeah. You know, Andrea Bocelli and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then the water spits up. Yeah. The volcano is the volcano. You yeah. Know? I, yeah. I, I think it's very cool. And, you know, the, the Mirage was a real trendsetter because mm-hmm. not only, I mean, the, this type of resort was, was kind of new, I mean, at, at, of that level. But, you know, people were telling me this. Oh, yeah, they have a volcano and it goes off right there on the curb, basically. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm trying to imagine this. What do you mean they got a volcano? No, yeah, it spits fire. Right out there, I mean, like you walk by it. Right. It's not like, you know, off off to the side. or No, no, no. It's right there on the street. Yeah. And, and yeah, you really got to see it. And, you know. I loved it. And there was a time when you could watch, I believe you could watch the volcano and then flow right over to watch the pirate battle. Yes. In and, front of the treasure And I still island. think that was the best. Yes. I really like that pirate. And I understand it's expensive to put on. You have real people. Yeah. I mean, not, not not that the volcano was was cheap. I heard you know yeah. that cost them a lot of money, but still, that that pirate battle was really something. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Uh, it, you know, and even when they sort of devolved into having the hot chick pirates, mm. 
uh, and then shortly after that, that's when when the ship started stopped moving. Yeah, and stopped having the show. But um, absolutely, I think those were 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 so fun. Yeah, and it was one of those free things that was just a you could stop walking, you could have some fun, grab a drink, and see all these things. Uh, but uh, definitely, definitely. And you know, when we worked at the Venetian, we remember we used to have to do the sweet tours. Yes. Yeah, and those those were always a pain in the ass. But but if we were lucky enough. To get one of the rooms to show yes. that overlooked the Treasure Island, mm -hmm. I would time it so that we could go up there and watch the pirate battle. Right from the, it was a great view. It right. was a great view. He said, "Folks, we got to go up there right now because there's a pirate battle. You're going to see it. It's going to look great." Yeah, and uh, as we as we continued on with our tenure as concierge, we I, I could hear uh, the the cannons go off. Yeah, yeah, every, every day, all yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now the owner uh, of the of now it's just the TI. Yeah. Uh, Phil Ruffin, mm -hmm. I think it is. He bought uh, Smart Man. He bought uh, Circus Circus. Circus Circus, yeah. Because he knows a cash cow when he sees one, oh, right? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Bellagio, you know, Bellagio selling, uh, you know, people that aren't part of Las Vegas or don't, you know, keep track of the high finance of Vegas, um, you know, it's a quite a brilliant thing they're doing. You know, this, uh, the sale leaseback yeah. uh, uh, projects that they're doing with MGM. Um, uh, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, bottom line, they're going to make money. But uh, uh, I, I don't know. There's something, it seems underhanded it's, to me. There's but. something wrong. Well, part of the reason I heard is, you know, they want to invest in Japan. Um, yes. And I've known this for years. Uh, heard that, that they were waiting because of the Olympics. Japan's going to need to fund bringing more money. Now, they've already raised their consumption tax, mm -hmm. which is their sales tax. Now, over here, people bitch and moan when the sales tax goes from seven to seven and a quarter. Right. In Japan, in October of this year, it went from eight to 10%, 2% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. raise, right? Yeah. So th that's part of that's going to fund their, their Olympics, but then they're going to have, they're going to allow casinos in certain areas, a couple. So that's what the MGM wanted in on. They, yeah. they were licking their chops. I don't know of anybody... Um, who and I'm talking about Japanese people or people who know Japanese that think that that's a wise move. Japanese are not the gamblers that the um, the Chinese are. Mm -mm. Um, now the Japanese do like pachinko, some of them, in the same way that there's some people here like horse racing. That you know there's a certain there's a certain um, demographic that likes it. So you will attract some people to the slot machines, but they're but they're not into table games. But what they are into the average run of the mill, you know, uh, rank and file individual in Japan, they really like big lavish hotels with great coffee shops. They like to have nice dinners in in hotels. That's what they like to visit. But gambling, they're too you know they're they're too pragmatic to say, hey, I just lost my money. No, and to build and to build for the whales, I think is a is a mistake for two reasons. One, they're few and far between. Yeah. And two, I think the Japanese whales, and when I say whales, if anybody doesn't know it, what whales are, are heavy, heavy gamblers. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, what the public tends to call the high roller. Tier yeah. one gamblers. Yeah. Um, I think they're destination gamblers. They don't want to They don't, they don't want to gamble, gamble at home. No. no. They want to no. come here. No. Yeah. And, and the other thing they That's know. That's why Macau wasn't, it hasn't been a blockbuster. Yes. It's too yeah. close. It's too close. And and the same thing with China. They're, they'd rather come here because I went to the, I went to the, I went to the real deal. Yeah. I went to Las Vegas. Yeah. That's and, funny about the coffee shop. So I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. They'd love to go there and spend, you know, five, six <laughs> bucks on a cup of coffee and sit right. there and it's, it's elegant. Yeah. And, okay. And visit the hotel. That's why they like yeah. coming here. They like to look at the hotels. Right. Uh, yeah, sure, they might gamble a little bit, but they're not mostly mm -hmm. slot machines because you don't need language for that. Okay, yeah. just press buttons, yeah. and uh, so, so you know that. But but a lot, m the a lot of the whales, the Japanese whales that come over here, I'm not going to say all of them, or but but a fairly substantial p uh, percentage mm -hmm. are going to be yakuza. No, <laughs> right? No, yeah, I know. I mean, and you people know. think that's not, people think that's uh, um, you know a. Uh, a a falsehood mm. and it's not really no no you know it just happens to be a a, a, a very fantastical name yeah you know but it's true no and, and <laughs> where i lived when i first went to japan i spent two years in the they said it was the country mm -hmm. and, it, and it was i mean it wasn't tokyo or osaka it was right dab in the middle yeah in a in a city called hamamatsu mm -hmm. and hamamatsu is considered small by japanese standards a half a million people right but because of its location uh it was it was pretty well stocked with a Yakuza because you're halfway between the two. And sometimes they would have turf wars. I remember being in a bar and all of a sudden, I mean, it was crowded and all of a sudden everybody's gone. 
<laughs> everybody just, I mean, bam. I mean, within three or four minutes, everybody's left except me and a group of guys at a table. And what had happened was they had come in for, I mean, and I, you recognize them immediately as being Yakuza because they have a certain look, they have a certain style. Mm -hmm. In the old days, we used to say, you know, there was the gay look with the mustache and you looked at, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Freddie mm -hmm. Mercury look, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it was the same in Japan with the Yakuza. They dressed differently. They had punch perm hair. You know, it was funny. You look at, oh, that guy's Yakuza. Mm -hmm. And um, they had come in, they needed to have a sit down and they told the mama-san, everybody out, the foreigner can stay. Because I don't understand what it is that they're talking about. She didn't have to say much. They did, guys just have to stand there and people will get out. They will leave. Check, please. And they left. And then I was sitting there. And because Yakuza, <laughs> even in their own country, are outsiders, right. I got to know quite a few of them. Yeah. They would come over there and, you know, hey, there's the there's the outsider. And, and so were they. So, yeah, they were real. Yeah. yeah. And they liked to gamble. Yeah. They were the ones that did. And they played a game. It was really kind of funny to watch them play this this card game. We think of the manly type of games, you know, poker, guys chomping on a cigar. Yeah. You know, now the Japanese have a game called Hanafuda, flower cards. They're small little cards, bigger than a domino, but smaller than a playing card. And they're on, they're stiff. They don't bend like, like a playing card. So you really can't do a standard, you know, riffle shuffle. Riffle, yeah. You have to do more of what they call a Hindu shuffle over, kind of like an overhand shuffle. With okay. Them. Okay. And they're little cards and you slap them down and they match. They got little flowers on it, a chrysanthemums and they've got something else. So it's more like Trump, okay. a Trump type of game where yeah, yeah. whist or something, you wore some cards, you get certain ones. And I remember one time a, a couple of old ladies who were gruff old ladies teaching me to play this game and they kicked my ass. Do you think they, <laughs> they cut me any slack? I was like, hey, wait a minute. I just lost 2,000 yen here to these old ladies. And yeah, they're bilking the foreigner teaching wow. me how to play Hanafuda. That's funny. Yeah. Well, uh, a happy 30th anniversary to the Mirage. Yes. We have a second anniversary, which is a little less fun, but still amazing part of Las Vegas history. The yeah. 39th anniversary yeah. of the MGM Grand Fire. The yes. MGM Grand, which of course now is Bally's. Bally's, yeah. Uh, the fire location. started in the kitchen area. Uh, killed 87. Yes. And injured 700. Yeah. Uh, happened on November 21st, 1980. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they apparently of the 87, they say a high percentage of them died from the smoke inhalation. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, the fire and, itself. Yeah, yeah, and the and the uh, plastics burning, mm -hmm, the poisons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, uh, an amazing part of our history. Yeah, uh, and I, you know, really nothing, nothing really has happened of that magnitude yeah. in, as far as fires no no since then no. uh the cosmopolitan has had some interesting fires at their yes. pool area yes they have and it's interesting when <laughs> and you monte carlo and the monte carlo when you think about you know the the fire department here yeah those are you know those are some big buildings yes. and how they put the fires out like they did on the pool deck yeah with, without they, uh, much damage. yeah very challenging i think it's equally challenging here more so in some ways uh, than like a Chicago or New York, yeah. Uh, because we have to, we have most of our stuff is facade, yeah. And there's nothing to crane on to, and yeah, yeah it's amazing. But uh, 39, God, 39 years, yeah, that's amazing, yeah, that's amazing. So, so I made a list, John, of some holiday uh, happenings here in the old Vegas, yeah, and uh, some I've never heard of, uh, it's, and they sound quite fun. We're always talking about bad stuff. You and I are, you're, yeah. you, you and I are known for our. Well, you're known to be cranky. I'm known to be cranky. Yeah, I mean, and, I, and I only get worse as the holidays approach. Uh, yeah, that's true. Don't we all? So so here's some things we can you can do when you visit Vegas. Hopefully yes. you can visit Vegas once in your lifetime during the holidays. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you can drive your car through the holiday racetrack oh. at the Motor Speedway. Motor Speedway. Yeah. Oh, I didn't 20 know 20 bucks. Uh, you can drive your car through. Everything goes to charity except, you know, for the overhead. Or you can take the Santa tram that does the same route. Yeah. And they have hot chocolate and caramel corn nice. and everything else. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Uh, it's a kind of a drive to get out there. You're looking yeah. at probably mm, 45 minutes yeah. uh, with traffic, but uh, uh, very cool. I've never heard of that. I, I never. Uh, no, I hadn't yeah, either. Very interesting. Um, so, yeah, the the... Something that I, I always like, in fact, we'll talk about that later in the show, uh, the, 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 the decorations, decor, uh, the forum shops is always uh, really sort of uh, forward thinking when it comes to decor. And yeah. um, they have, they used to have the tallest tree every year. They, yeah. don't, they don't anymore, unfortunately. Yeah. 40 foot tree and then an, a contingent of eight foot centurion um, toy soldiers. Oh, nice. 
Have you seen those? Yes, I have. Yeah. Yes, those are nice. Did you yeah. ever uh, take your boy to FAO Schwartz? No, I, I Before didn't. Before it, it, it... I don't think... No, I didn't. They used to have one in San Francisco. Yeah. That was always really nice. We, we went a, around then. Yeah. We, uh, yeah. <laughs> we had a cool one. We yeah. had a great FAO Schwartz. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I remember was, that with the, in, the, in the forum shops. Yeah. 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 That was a great one. Uh, speaking of the Cosmo, uh, you can go ice skating. Actually, yes. you can go a couple places. They just started. They just opened it this year. Again. Just opened it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, ice skating on the pool deck of the Cosmo. Now, uh, 25 bucks. That mm. seems high. I yeah. don't know. Is that high? I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah, they got the T-Mobile there when the Golden Knights aren't playing. What they let them go out yeah, there? Yeah, the T-Mobile one is kind of lame. It's sad. We've yeah. talked about that uh, last year, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a little tiny. Yeah. Uh, but it also, uh, T-Mobile's, uh, the co- that, that sort of rotunda area now has the biggest tree. Yeah. Uh, However, I think the Venetian is is trying to top that. Mm. They're going sixty feet, I think. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, ice skating at the pool deck of the Cosmo, uh, uh, very cool, actually. Why don't they have the biggest menorah? I mean, you know, Adelson's <laughs> Jewish. <laughs> That's, you know? right. That's right. They should. I think so. <laughs> Just don't make me climb up and light it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, now, uh, now th- this this might make you cringe. Yeah. Uh, being the heavy metal guy that you are. Yeah. Mariah Carey uh, has a Christmas concert. Oh, no. Yes. Yeah. You know, I told you, well, one of the things when I went to Japan, I was really looking forward to 1984 is I didn't have to listen to any more fucking Christmas music by pop stars, <laughs> even ones that I liked. Bruce Springsteen singing bullshit, Mariah Carey singing. Right. But it was worse over there. They, yeah. That's all they played. Yeah. Old, old Mariah. Oh, she starts God. at 55 bucks over there at Caesars. Um, now, she ha- held the record... Uh, for a long time, for the uh, highest um, uh, number of sales for a Christmas album. Oh yeah, yeah. She she was uh, uh, and and once thought to be unbeatable, but it has been beat apparently oh. by Mr. John Legend and oh. his compendium uh, Christmas album, uh, because he added four new tracks on it, and I guess it gained popularity. But uh, yeah, Mariah Carey. I don't know that anyone. I, I don't. I, I know of one person going, but uh, I don't know. Mariah Carey's not my favorite. No, she's a little screechy for me. And and uh, and the whole diva thing, the stories. I mean, it may not be true. I don't know. You know, you know how the press is. But um, um, now this one you might like. Yeah. Uh, they are having a pop up Christmas bar in Chinatown at the uh, at the Sand Dollar. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Called that's Miracle cool. on Spring Mountain. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who have not been to Vegas, Spring Mountain is a road that takes you past Chinatown and actually right into uh, yeah. the Mirage and Treasure Island. Yep. Uh, right really, really nice right off, yeah, yeah. right off the freeway. Yeah, right off the And that's where Chinatown is. Yes. Yep. Miracle on Spring Mountain, uh, the Sand Dollar, which is uh, very much known for blues, uh, a little bit of rock. I wouldn't say heavy metal. It's more of a blues bar. Yeah. Yeah. It's neat. Um, but they're having nice a pop-up Vegas. bar, uh, mixologist, everything. So I highly recommend that. That's a co- really cool place to go. It's not, uh, it's not trendy. Sand yeah. Dollar is definitely not trendy. No, It's for no. people who want to go listen to music, have a drink, and not have to worry about uh, being, you know, wearing the right shoes. Yeah. Huh. Uh, uh, next, uh, one of my favorites, I have to say, it's my, one of my favorites b- b- during and after Christmas, the Christmas version of Mystic Falls at Samstown. Oh, yeah. That's a nice one. I used Love to go that. there every year. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Samstown has in their large center rotunda area yeah. an animatronic uh, mountain Wolf and mountain, yeah. mountain scene. Uh, it's Coyote got and, yeah, it's uh, got the aromas, it's got the sounds, it's got the t- oh gosh, it's, it's it was so nice. nice. I used to go there, with the and the Christmas the version is even nicer. Yeah. So so if you got if anybody has a chance to take the drive and take 10 minutes to go see this, I would absolutely recommend they it. They used to have a really good breakfast buffet yeah, at they Samstown. Do. Yeah. Back in the day, it was four ninety five. I think it's seven ninety five now, but it's still mm-hmm. a bargain. Yeah, they had a Samstown and, um, oh, Arizona Charlie. Yes. Had the best graveyard specials. Yes. You could get, you know, plates as big as your head for like yeah. a, a dollar. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's a little different now. Yeah, Lots it is. Lots of are gone. But, yeah, uh, but still, seven ninety five isn't bad to have an omelet station. Yeah. You know, you yeah. pay that just just for the omelet. Yeah. Uh, the And uh, the, the link, of course, re- returning back down to Las Vegas South, Las Vegas Boulevard South, uh, the link area is having free shows. Um, yeah. Dancing yeah, and that, That's a word you don't hear anymore in Las yeah, Vegas. Yeah, I know. A four-letter word that starts with F. Right. <laughs> free. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, and of course, Bellagio looks really nice. They're, they're, the right? um, the um, Bellagio Gardens. The gardens look yeah, great. Absolutely. Yeah, great uh, and uh, we're going to go back to the Mirage. Mirage. See, Mirage. Yeah, Mirage. Still out there. Uh, a very Terry Christmas. Terry Fader, of course. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, this is the second Vin- version, apparently. Ventura. Yeah, it's the second year of it. And again, I have to uh, give him... Uh, I saw the first one last yeah. year. I have to give him a great deal of respect because I have to remind our listeners that haven't heard this, but I went, it was fantastic, and he was deathly sick. Yeah, you are mentioning that. Yes. I remember that. And he, the show went on. I show tell you, must he, go on. And he did a great job and his wife was on stage with him. Lots of fun. Same, same type of show, but with, um, he actually sang. I mean, he, huh. yeah, without the, without the puppets. Uh, and, uh, it was, it was great. But again, he was so sick. I could tell. And he just went on. So, Hey, good for you, Terry. Yeah. But, uh, uh, a very Terry Christmas at the Mirage number two. Um, <laughs> now this one, it brings a smile to my face, a little bit of a laugh, but it actually is a wonderful group, uh, uh, that, uh, a charitable group here in Las Vegas, Opportunity Village. Yes. Has the magical forest. Yes, they do. Uh, all of it goes to charity. Yes. They have wonderful parties at the Magical Forest. I have photographed the Magical Forest uh, yeah. for, for yeah, looks charity. Really nice. uh, it is beautiful and so well done. Uh, and That's uh, a big um, pen and Teller. Yes. Are very much involved in Opportunity yes. Village. And so another place that you can go to just enjoy the lights, walk around, donate to the charity itself. Opportunity Village ha- helps children of all levels. Um, and uh, they they do a fantastic job. Uh, they they used to make when I was working with the uh, uh, MGM International, they used to make these cookie boxes. The kids, yeah, yeah. The, they didn't make the cookies, but I mean they would make these boxes yeah. and hand them out. Uh, but uh, Magical Forest Opportunity Village, take a chance uh, uh, on those folks. They do a great job. Um, now this is interesting. Do you like to cook? Sounds like I'm starting a, an infomercial. Do you like to cook, yeah. John? <laughs> You know, it depends. I eat so much of the stuff that I eat raw that I don't have to, but still, yeah, you know, it's what's up together. But yeah. yeah, I don't mind cooking. Okay. Yeah. Um, more and more during the holidays, there, there. I've seen. I've never attended one, and I and I think we should go. Um, uh, this one I'm going to spotlight is learn to make holiday treats at the Paris. Oh, nice. By the chefs of the Paris. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've seen that w- in Thailand mm-hmm. at one of the uh, the the Oriental Hotel or, or one of the the big ones. That they all, yeah. they offer that as part of a tour. You would actually fly over there, where they would teach you to cook Thai food, and oh, Thai so food is cool. amazing. Yeah. And you know, it's just like well, but when you want to eat it, most of the time you got to go to the restaurant. Right. Would right. it be nice if you could make some of the some of the stuff at home? See, that's when people call themselves foodies. Yeah. That that is something I think a foodie. Uh, that's part of the definition. I want to learn to make the food. I want to eat the food. I want to know what's in the food. Yeah. And everything else. Most of the people are foodies, and they're just fat. Yeah. He's like, no, you just like yeah, to eat. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you're just a hog. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? And it's okay. But see, yeah. this is really cool. I think yeah. this is wonderful. And, and, and I think one of the things Las Vegas hotels have lost is that sort of deep interaction with their customers. Yeah. You can't, you're not allowed to go anywhere. You're not yeah. allowed to touch anything. Don't pull, don't pull your camera out. Don't do anything. You know, and you can't go there. You can't go here. Well, now they get to see, you know, the. Yeah, the, I, I think, I think, um, um, is it Michael Pollan who wrote the Omnivore's uh, Dilemma? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Pollan is his last name. I can't think of his first name. It's Michael or David, but, yeah, yeah. but look it up for me. Yeah, uh, anyway, he has mentioned that some, you know, one of the things that he had advocated also, and, and others have, have done it as well, is getting a, reconnecting with the food that you eat so you know where it comes from or you picked it yourself mm-hmm. or you, you prepared it yourself uh, so you have some connection to it. Okay. And and it's uh, you know there's there's a there's just a, it just makes the the meal more enjoyable. I think it's Michael. I think it is Michael. Uh, his P O L L A N. P O L L A N. Yeah. Michael pa- Paula. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Chef's table. Uh. Uh. Yeah. I, I agree. You know. And I and I think it's um. Uh. I, I think it's a wonderful trend. And more and more, and I'm just highlighting the Paris this time, but um, I know there's there's one at um, uh, there Bouchon is having one. Oh, Chef nice. Keller is sponsoring yes. one, uh, and I know that Eiffel Tower. Um, yeah. Eiffel Tower, I think it's less interactive. It's more of a visual watching the food because the yeah. Eiffel. Ta- if you've never been to the Eiffel Tower restaurant, wonderful place to enjoy the holidays, Christmas, and especially New Year's. 
Get your tickets early. They sell out. Uh, but they have an open kitchen. And yeah. you can watch everything yeah. happening. Very now, cool. I, I saw, I watched uh, Chef Keller's Masterclass. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really enjoyed it. It was really good. The yeah. things I learned, oh, that's pretty cool. He makes an omelet in the oven. Yeah. Um, but uh, other things, I mean, he makes it look so effortless and easy. They, I he does. If I tried to do that, I'd make a mess of it. Yeah. He's yeah. such a nice guy. <laughs> I know I've mentioned that on the show many times before, but I've worked with him and his staff and uh, the, the, the French Laundry, Bouchon, yeah, yeah. Bouchon Bakery. Um, uh, uh, fantastic. Yeah. And yeah. He, he's a fun guy. I mean, he's, he loves golf. I'm telling uh. you that, he loves golf. Uh, but he's a great guy and, um, uh, and lasting. Yeah, he he had he he. I don't know if he ever bought it, bought you know into himself like all like the celebrity chefs do, and he's just kept his career going and his cookbooks are amazing. Yeah, um, now I remember I also watched uh, Wolfgang Puck's Master Class. Yes, <laughs> and he had a, he had a great line in there, yeah. and it was he says he tells us all the chefs, get the best ingredients you can, and then then try not to fuck it up. That's what he <laughs> says. <laughs> <laughs> oh Wolfgang! Yes, I uh, I I did a uh, I did a, a grip and grin with him one time, and yeah, he's pretty blunt. Yeah, yeah, he's not a big guy either. He's <laughs> no. kind of a tiny guy. Yeah, he came to the desk concierge desk at one time, and I didn't recognize him because he grew a beard. Oh, right. okay. And, yeah. and I said, "Your name, sir?" But we yeah. just opened, and he said, "Puck." I said, "Oh, like Wolfgang." <laughs> And he goes, yes, that's me. Uh-huh. And I said, oh, I, oh, it is. That's I didn't recognize funny. you under that carpet. You know? Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, as we continue the holiday uh, stuff and uh, the fun stuff in Vegas, uh, Bellagio Gardens, you mentioned, uh, always a treat. You know, just an amazing uh, thing to see. Uh, right next to the uh, the uh, check-in area of the Bellagio, um, uh, you can see the Dale Chihuly uh, blown glass yes. there as well. Um, you know, as nice as that is, I still think if you ever get a chance to go to Monterey, mm-hmm. if it was there, I mean, it's been years when I used to live in Monterey, I, I had a pass to the aquarium mm-hmm. um, and it was great. I mean, I forgot what I paid for it, but I could go there every day and I often I did mm. uh, just to walk around. But he had a jellyfish, it, it, they had a yeah. wonderful jellyfish exhibit and they they featured alongside of it Dale Chihuly Blown Glass. Yeah. Amazing. It was great. And I look, I said, wow. Oh, it is. Yeah, that's to me, and I'd already seen the Blasios. I said, man, this is just... And his artist medium was, of course, Murano glass. I have had the extreme uh, fortune to go to Murano and and the sister city, Burano. Yeah. Uh, And Burano Burano is actually known for uh, their... uh, their, um, uh, They make doilies. Oh, yeah, they, they make these wonderful doilies uh, and their silk work. Uh, but Murano glass, uh, I saw the Murano guys actually blow the glass. Very cool. But yeah, I, I, I've seen the one yeah, the piece yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, next, a, a must do, I think, and then and then leave. <laughs> uh, the Fremont f- Switch Flip mm. by Mayor Goodman. Oh yeah, she's going to turn the, the the change the show to the Christmas show on the uh, Fremont uh, canopy. Uh, if you've never been out there to the Fremont Street Experience, they have this big canopy, which is an LED proj- uh, projected thing, uh, and uh, they changed the show to the Christmas show, uh, and Santa flies by and so on and so forth, if he's allowed. Are, yeah. we, are we allowed to have Santa now? I don't know. Can we have trees and Santa, and or, or we cannot? We have to be all neutral. You can show up Christmas present. You can't even show that. You, well, it could be. I mean, Hanukkah has presents too, yeah. Kwanzaa yeah. has presents. I, I, don't, think I don't know. Do. I think presents are okay. I don't know. Happy Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. Yeah, that's what I also. Yeah, um, but Fremont Street. Uh, uh, if you don't catch the mayoral f- switch flip, yeah. you can still see the show. Well, you're saying it, cool. yeah, instead of the the mayoral switch, it is Goodman because we've had Goodmans as as mayor here for like it's sixteen wife, years, right? Yeah. It's the yeah. wife first it's it was wife. Oscar yeah. for eight years, I guess, yeah. and then and then his wife took over. Oh so. yeah, yeah. She, and we've had her, and Oscar was cool. She's cool. Yeah, you know, I think it's uh, yeah. Oscar was a character. Oh yeah. Real character, great history too. And he has that restaurant he even had, which which That's is right. which. Uh, what is it? Uh, Booze and broads Booze or something, and broads. something like that. <laughs> right. It's called something like that. Yeah, I think so. yeah. It's yeah. got that old, you know, it's got that old uh, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, feel to it. Oscar. That's Oscar. He doesn't give a shit about no about identity politics. That's right. Oscar knew the yakuza. Yeah, yeah he knew everybody. Oh yeah, he he <laughs> defended them over here, right? <laughs> wasn't, sure. he, wasn't he Tony Spilatro's attorney? <laughs> oh yeah, I think yeah, he was. He was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was big time. Yeah. Um, and let's see. Uh, well, that was it uh, for the, the, those are just some hi- highlights and spotlights, yeah. but I got some questions for you. All right. In Las Vegas, since yeah. you told me you were a bit, you've been here uh, off and on for 20 years, 20 years. Yeah. Mostly um, on now. Mostly on. Uh, what is your favorite Las Vegas 
Thanksgiving tradition. And what's your favorite Thanksgiving tradition just for your family? For me, I mean, I like Thanksgiving. In the holiday seasons, it, it, it ranks for me, the, 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 I guess, number one mm-hmm. in favorite one, only because, mostly because it hasn't been so fully exploited mm-hmm. as Christmas has, uh, as other ones would go out and buy shit. The only thing that, that you know, it, it, I'm sure turkey sales go way up because that's what you, that's what you have, right? I mean, it, one it's, would it's think. A, yeah, one would think. Um, but other than that, they really haven't gotten into ways of of capitalizing on it, except that oh, I know. Let's have the day after it. You know, uh, the you know, actually Black now, Friday. Th- yeah, Black Friday. Yeah. So now it becomes to the point of it's no longer. The Black Friday. It's Thanksgiving becomes the day before Black Friday, practically. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and and of course the the story that's told, the absolute utter bullshit story of of the Pilgrims and the Indians <laughs> is. I mean, I, I I cast that aside. Um, you know, again, if it hadn't been for the Native Americans, those idiots would have starved because they didn't. They came over here not <laughs> knowing anything, and and of course they should have let them starve. But that's another story. Yeah. Um, so, so John Thorpe Gladwell, yes, apparently. yes, <laughs> yeah, he should have said, which, what should we do? Fuck them. Let them starve. <laughs> They're going to come over here and wipe us out okay. otherwise, you know, but anyhow. Um, so, so I, I've, um, and I don't like big crowds, even family. I can tolerate, uh, you know, three or four of my relatives at one time and that's about it. Yeah. Uh, other than that, it's just like, no, no. So I, what I liked about it is I don't. Is that I don't travel. Mm-hmm. I don't know how people. I, I look at it. I see. I see on the news. It's and who wants? If you want to travel, yes, this is a great place to come. Mm-hmm. Why? Because it's sixty-five degrees here, or California. It's not. You right. know, you're not buried under under six feet of snow, and there's yeah. not a blizzard. And yeah, you know, <laughs> we do have snow in the mountains, though. Yeah, it did snow the other day up it in did. Mount Charleston. Mount Charleston. Yeah, it looks yeah. Great. Lee Canyon and Brian yeah. Head. They're all getting ready yeah. for sure. But I like cranberries. Okay, now now here's here's this is yes. an important topic. Yes, Cran- you, you like the jelly or the the berries? The berries. And one of the things I do okay. because that's the other thing. So you don't like the tube to come out and go splat on the well. The thing there's and n- slice n- it. nostalgic. <laughs> I had that as a kid. You know, that's nostalgic. The tube. The tube. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And, and then when you when he dumped it out of the can, it had the imprint of the bottom of the label right yes, on the top and, exactly. and the ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so that's nostalgic for me. So I would eat it. Yes. Like that. Uh, but I don't want the, the stuff. Hey, if it says if it's it's organic, no. Why? Because they didn't have that when I was a kid. That's right. It's not the same stuff. Right. It has to be Ocean Spray, or whatever it was, it came yes. in the can. It has to be that brand, right? Because that's you, the only one. Have you and have any of our listeners ever noticed that cranberry cans yeah. are upside down? What, look at your can okay. next time. Yeah, right. And normally the raised uh, yeah, yeah, lip yeah. is the top of the can because that's the can opener. That's yeah. the, look at your can of cranberries and tell me if it's not flipped over. Yeah. That the label is with the flat side up. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Now, what I like to do, because you can only get cranberries this time of year, unlike other fruits where they might grow them in a hothouse or whatever, mm-hmm. you really can't get cranberries any other time of the year that are, you know, uh, except except now. And, yeah. And what I do is I get, today I went to the store, I bought four bags. I'm wow. going to juice it because I have a juicer. Oh, nice. And if, if you want, if you're a wimp, you can put an apple in it. Yeah, that'll take out that tart. But but you take uh-huh. that and here, drink this and watch watch them. Oh <laughs> God! Yeah. My let's see. My favorite Thanksgiving tradition kind of leans towards yours. I like quiet. Yes. Uh, we have such a din in our lives that yeah. that it's it's a wonder we can all hear at all. Yeah. Um, but I like the quiet. I like the campy things. I like uh, I like the parades on TV. Uh-huh. I like the dog shows. I like I sure. like all that stuff. Yeah. You know, and uh, the the foods, you know, we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, but uh, uh, I was not a cranberry fan. Yeah. I kind of like it. I, I am not, not so much. Uh, but um, I like as far as the Las Vegas tradition, you know, I got to go. I got to go with bingo. Oh, of course. I end up going South Point? With, uh, South Point Bingo. Yeah. I always go with family uh, and or friends. And uh, it's silly. It's n- just nonsense. Uh, uh, and uh, it's fun, and you and you you kill an hour, yeah. and you make fun of all the old people with their oxygen tanks with the smoke yeah, and a cigarette, yeah, yeah. and uh, it's a lot of fun, and and you get free stuff. Yeah, they give you like uh, last time. Well, they used to give away turkeys. 
Yeah. You know, and they don't do that much anymore. But uh, 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 rocks glasses, I end up I, I pens and all kind of stuff. Uh, but if you like the tchotchkes, they love to give away those. Yeah. Stuff. No, I was in Phoenix last weekend. And I was talking to a guy who said, oh, you, you live up in Las Vegas, yeah. He said he had an aunt, you know, lived off of Silverado Ranch. He uh -huh. goes, yeah, well, whenever we go, we stay at the South Point. I said, well, that's the best place to stay for locals, you know, really, yeah. because they've got everything there. Yeah. And um, I, I know people coming from out of town, they want to uh, attend a conference or something, want to save right. a little bit on money. Mm -hmm. I said, well, well, you know, it's pretty easy to get up to the Strip. I mean, you're really on it. I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah, you're... you're, you're you're really not on the strip. You're on Las Vegas Boulevard. Right. right. Um, but there's, it's you're really a five minute Uber. Yes. You're yeah. five minute Uber. They've got the movie theater. If, if, if you just don't want to leave and don't want to gamble or whatever, they've got, yeah, they got plenty to do. Yeah. Bingo. Like Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So equestrian, of course it's, it's world class. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, and the, of course the uh, bowling alley, the bowling alley. Oh, oh, sure they do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm bowling forever. Uh, PBR, the bull riders, yeah. uh, NFR, W N F R. Sorry. Wrangler. Can't forget the uh, sponsor. Um, okay. So what's on your menu this year for Thanksgiving? Well, are you, are you going to do a formal dinner? Or? Well, it's just, it's just my kid and I, yeah. and he's vegan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so, okay. So why would there were, there's he vegan or vegetarian? Well, he's more vegan. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, okay. there's certain things he doesn't need to know about, which, I mean, he'll have honey or something, so he's not really a vegan. Like I said, eh, cool. I don't buy the bee thing. Yeah, the, the torture I don't either. of the bees. It's not torturing him. It's, it's stealing their labor. Why? We do this to ourselves all the time, <laughs> and, we, and we sanction it. I know. And there's you barely know? any bees left. So, yeah. You know. yeah. I saw one the other day in my yard. It really likes my stevia plant. I grow my own stevia. Yeah. And it comes over there and says, okay, that's cool. I'm yeah. just going to steal this oh, leaf yeah. bee. You Foster the bees. Yes. Okay, so yes. you're, you're, you're for, not for torturing the bees. Yeah. So it's, yeah, not for torturing the bees um, because it doesn't torture. It's not like we're grinding the bees up in no, there. Of course not. Whatever, so. But. So, so uh, okay, so, so he's sort of vegan. Yeah. So what's on your menu? It's going to be, we're going to really carb load. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, for the guy who doesn't eat carbs, right? And yeah. So, so well, you got to. You got to spoil gonna, yourself. Yes. So it's going to be the mashed potatoes. And I got my grandmother's pumpkin pie recipe because mm -hmm. it's also nostalgic. My okay. grandmother would make these pies and then and then swear at them. Mm -hmm. Oh, the goddamn pies. She'd be pissed off because <laughs> one of them split or something like right. that. And that's what I remember her just her dis disgust with these pies. Yes. They always tasted great. Yeah. Now, when you put whipped cream on the top of it, you don't even notice it. Oh, it's got a split in it or something like a. It's like the same. We lived in California. It's a fault. Right. right. It's a fault line. <laughs> right. The whole goddamn state has got a split <laughs> exactly, in it. Exactly. Exactly. Now, know. back to the potatoes. Yes. Box potatoes? No, no. Real potatoes. Real potatoes. Do you go with russet? Or do you go with the Yukon Gold? Mix them both. You do? Yes. Okay. Because russets, I've, I've sort of read recently where, where a mashed potato with all russet is too starchy. Yes. Yes. So you want to mix it with some of the Yukon Gold or just okay. the gold ones. So okay. you mix the both of them. Very good. Uh, yes. Excellent. I'm glad you knew that. Yes. Yeah, so I always yeah. say potatoes come out of the ground. They don't come out of a box. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm hiding my face in front of John. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> it takes time to mash potatoes yeah, during yeah. the week. <laughs> now, Thomas Keller had a, has a really nice, but it, it, it's different. It's a, it's a it, not mashed potatoes. It's the puree. Okay. Which he runs through a, a, a basically like a rice blender. ricer or something okay, like yeah, that. Yeah. And gets it really thin. But yeah. I kind of like them a little bit lumpy. Okay. I mean, not like big, like, oh, this one didn't get mashed in there, but it's got a little more stiffness yeah. to it. You know? <laughs> a, okay, now now knowing that you don't eat meat, what yeah. is going to be your meat? What Are you, you going to do a faux meat? Tofurkey? No, no, yeah. it'll just Have be... Have you ever had tofurkey? No, it doesn't look anything. good. No it, no, it doesn't look good no. at all. Anything that comes out in like a loaf. A like lump. A, yeah, a big lump. <laughs> now, I saw something interesting on... Uh, it was a dietician talking about the impossible meat or whatever it is that they're selling at Burger impossible King. Impossible and beyond. Yeah, yeah, and they're saying, you know, it really isn't very healthy, people think, because it is. It's all processed it is, shit, yeah. Yeah. basically. And... Particularly if you're a guy over forty, uh -huh. cut down on the on the uh, on the soy. A lot of it, you look at it. Oh, it's it's yeah. meatless protein. Well, what yeah. is it? It's soy. Yeah. It's an, it's estrogenic. You'll get man tits. Yeah, and your wiener stops working. Yeah, but you gotta you gotta eat a lot of soy. Now, granted, uh, you know weightlifters and bodybuilders, and they eat a lot of soy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. I I um, uh, I. I sp we sort of drop the vegetarianism on Thanksgiving. You know, yeah. we, we don't buy a whole turkey. We just buy slices. Yeah. Um, and, and actually, I am going to cook a turkey, a very small one, because yeah. the dog likes it. Yeah. It's called a chicken. Yeah. yeah. 
the dog likes it so much. T- and, and I actually enjoyed cooking the yeah. turkey. Yes, Yeah, I actually enjoyed it, that. Yeah. And the, like I said, the dog sits there and camps out in front of the oven. Yeah. It's funny watching her sitting there waiting, oh, yeah. watching guard over it. Oh, yeah. Mine mm-hmm. watch the floor. They, yeah. they know what's coming. Yeah, yeah, they know what's yeah. coming. Okay, John, last question. Yes. Uh, what, it, what has been your wildest holiday? In Vegas or not? Oh, I'm kind of beyond the wild. Well, you know, I'd have to go back to my days in Japan. Okay. Um, when they have Shogatsu. Often do. Yeah, Shogatsu. Okay. Which is um, three days, supposed to be January. It's first. It's uh, it's the New Year's. You know, Asia, the, the, the New Year is the big holiday. Right, right. Whether the Chinese have their own, in, you know, based on the lunar calendar, but the Japanese will go with the... with. January 1st. So usually right. January 1st, 2nd, 3rd with Shogatsu. Everything closes down. Everybody just stays home and and, and it's kind of like more like Thanksgiving is without the big crowds. Okay. So you sit around and you drink and, and they had special food that I didn't like. It was really, really bad, I thought. Right. Right. But <laughs> other parts of it were good and they had and always the beer is good. Okay. So a friend and I were foreigners and we were warned, we were told everything closes for Shogat, so you better do your shopping early. Well, we go to the store and it's mobbed. Yeah. I mean, it's always mobbed in Japan, wherever you go, because there's just a lot of people. Right. But this was even worse. Said, oh, fuck this. We'll go later. Let's go. Let's go to the. Let's go get a drink. Right. Because we were off work for the for four days, so okay. we went there and drank. And then, sure enough, we need to go to the store and get some because he his cupboard is bare and so is mine. Right. And all he had in his refrigerator was a bottle of ketchup and a tube of Vicks VapoRub. Why he put it in the refrigerator, I don't know, but he did. <laughs> what I had in my refrigerator was uh, milk that was just about ready to turn because I put it in my coffee. Oh, yeah. Okay. And a bottle of beer. Wow. That was all. We go to the store and of course they're closed. Yeah. Everything, the 7-Eleven, everything was closed. So we had to live for three days going on a bender, basically saying the pubs were open. <laughs> the, the pubs and the bars and the and the and the hostess clubs were open. Yeah. We spent a fortune. I bet. Yeah. I bet. The wildest holiday I So I don't remember it. You guys what right. did you do? I don't remember. I was so, drunk for three days. Well, that's pretty wild though. Yes. Yeah. The wild I'm not a wild guy, but the wildest holiday that I remember um, is oh gosh. It has to be it has to be a New Year's but I always worked New Year's yeah. at the Venetian Hotel as a concierge. And um, I, you know, it was, the, the one I remember most is the, it was the first New Year's that I worked. And if anybody has ever experienced New Year's in Vegas, you know that it's world class. I mean, yeah. It's, oh, it's, yeah. it is just as good as New York um, and all the major cities uh, in, the, in the world. Um, Except it's warmer. It's yeah. I mean, it's not. It's not it still, warm. Yeah, it was still it, chilly. It is, yeah. yeah, but it's not. It's not freezing. But a friend, uh, our friend and colleague, Cami. Yes. Uh, she and I. I don't know how this happened, but we we got the short straw, <laughs> and we worked New Year's Eve. Yeah, I'd worked one of those. I, I worked yeah. two, ninety nine to two thousand. Yeah. yeah and Year. we walked out, and in front of the Venetian. For all of you who've been here, for all of you who haven't, it's called the when you walk out the front of the Venetian to Las Vegas Boulevard, uh, there is a place which is a facade. It's the Doge Palace entrance. Yep. With the bridge of uh, the bridge, bridge of size, size over there, uh, and a, there's a waterway you can walk over the bridge there, uh, and you walked over the bridge, and uh, we there there are gates. There used to be gates. Uh, they still put them up uh, to keep all the people away from the casinos because you're not allowed to go in the casino during New Year's unless you have uh, been invited yeah. or paid the paid the ticket fee. So there's this Las Vegas Boulevard just packed, packed, packed with people all waiting for the countdown, um, uh, countdown, and the ensuing fireworks. Well, I don't know how it happened. This is the same time I also saw uh, the equestrian cops, uh, uh, how they use the horses yeah. into moving the people. Amazing. Good good, good for them. But um, for some reason, the gate got open. Mm. And they all swarmed this little water and bridgeway. And Cammie and I were there. We went out to watch the show. Yeah. And we were just engulfed by these people. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And uh, so we were stuck. 
we we had to sit there watch the fireworks and everything else it was just she and i and and that pretty much was the wildest one i had because we couldn't move we couldn't go anywhere and and yet when it was all over they just disappeared they just dissipated back into the street and we walked right back right back to our our office um so that was kind of the wildest thing huh. otherwise i avoid it yeah when, when i worked at new year's eve uh, and I went. It was ninety nine to go to, to turn to the year two thousand. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Everybody's outside, so I walked out there and I watched the countdown on the Mirage board that they had there yeah. to two thousand. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean the 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 the, the stanchions were up there, right. so nobody was. So it was nice. Right. And and everybody's outside, so we were pretty dead. Yeah. Um. And but you really saw you really saw the greed wheels. In full motion, there they were charging, you know, six hundred dollars a night for sure. And every, like you said, you want to go someplace, you have to pay for this, you got to pay for that, right? And they had, you know, they were supposed to put on a show for the for the casino guests. Mm-hmm. The tickets weren't ready, and we had to, you know, yeah. it was a shitty show. I think it was Vanessa Williams or somebody like that that they got. Uh, yeah, might have been, might have been, yeah, yeah. It was a long time ago. Yeah, 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 it was, and then, and then, you know, it, it would leak out who they had one year. They might have had share, yeah. And people wanting to buy tickets. No, you can. It's invite only. You know, you right. smell too much. You don't right. gamble enough. <laughs> You're not on the list. I'm That's sorry, right. I can't sell you a ticket. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I absolutely wish you a, a happy holidays coming up, John. Uh, and to everybody listening, uh, happy holidays, happy Thanksgiving. We hope you find uh, some peaceful times coming up, uh, and uh, and be kind to somebody. You know, that's kind of I, I I listened to uh, Tom Hanks give an interview recently uh, about his portrayal of Fred Rogers. Oh yes, and, yeah, I want to see that. I heard and that I'm 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 moved by one simple fact, uh, and, and and I'm so thrilled that Fred Rogers was good. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I know there's some some schmucks out there trying to prove he wasn't, and stop. Uh, but but be kind to to somebody, yeah. a family member, a friend, somebody on the street, because I got to tell you, uh, you know, the my my life is is unfortunately shrouded by not kind people. Yeah, you know, uh, and and I see so many things that are just awful, and it really it discourages me for the human race, and I don't like our world right now yeah and uh, so so be peaceful and be kind and have a wonderful holiday however you celebrate it yeah so uh and you will and 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 john absolutely you do too uh, uh you're not traveling are you no yeah. no I, I was invited places and i said are you nuts <laughs> that what i like about well i'll tell you what i like about most about thanksgiving is thursday and for having thursday and friday off Yes. Because I could stretch it into four days. Good so. for you. Yes. Good for you. Yeah, so. well, but you know what? You were mentioning Fred Rogers. Yes. And, you know, he's easy. It's easy to, 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 to parody. Very you know, Mr. Much. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, and hello, boys and girls in yeah. the red sweater. But he was a, he was a superb educator, yeah, particularly of, of, younger, of young children. That's very difficult. It takes a real talent. Yeah. He did not sell out. He was offered contracts, you know, to, he could have gone to CBS or ABC and, and, and done a 20-minute show. And never advertised. He, and, yes, and, yeah. and, and, and hawked breakfast cereals right. and, and made even more money than he did, which was, I mean, he, yeah, he's all well off, but he, he could have made a lot more. He didn't do that. He did a, he did a show. It was always on PBS. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He was instrumental. I might have mentioned this on the show before, which surprised me. You know, growing up, one of the, one of my influences mm-hmm. um, in in warping my sense of humor mm-hmm. is Monty Python's Flying Circus. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was, I understand, instrumental in having PBS bring Mon- show Monty Python in the U.S. Oh, yeah. I mean, may, I I don't know if it meant he liked it or if he just respected the fact that, hey, different strokes for different folks. Right. I kind of have to think that he probably did. He right. probably appealed to something in him like that. So well, more I power th- to him. Uh, more power to him. Uh, and he's not with us anymore, which no. is sad. But um, I, I think uh, uh, how apropos that ostensibly the nicest person we have currently of Tom Hanks yeah. uh, is playing is playing Fred Rogers. Yes. You know, and I'm sure he's going to do a superlative job. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I uh, again, you know, if you have an opportunity to be kind to somebody, try to. You know, there's not enough of that, I think. Yeah. Uh, But for John, this is Jamie. Happy holidays, and we will see you after Thanksgiving. Hey, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning into the show. We would love to hear your show suggestions and comments. If you're watching on our YouTube channel, please click to subscribe. You can also connect with us on Facebook using at P. 
TPBD Podcast. On Twitter, using at TPBD Podcast. And on WordPress at thepodbaydoor.wordpress.com. 